All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <clears throat> so this morning we're going to be in chapter 22 of Genesis. It's chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. And here we have a testing of Abraham. And we have a lot of people that don't quite know how to take this particular chapter. So we're going to go through and we're going to talk about what it is that Abraham was told to do and and why and what the purpose of it was. <clears throat> so if you want to open up, we're going to be in chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. First, we'll get some music and then we'll get into it. Anyone that we can, we try to be in the night, standing in the gap to bring God's word. 
We truly appreciate you being with us today. And if there is anything that we can pray for, we ask that you just reach out to us. Reach out to us through text, through email, through messaging, and any way that you can get a hold of us. Let us know how we can be the knife standing in the gap for you. And we truly do appreciate each and every one of you. And now, here is today's message. All right, so if you'll bow your heads and pray with me, please, and we'll get into chapter 22 here. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings, Lord. We ask that you just let this word reach those that need to hear it, Lord. We ask that you bless this message, that this message stay intact and reach those that need to hear it. And Lord, we ask that this message be your words and, and your will and what you want us to take from this. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So we're in chapter 22 of Genesis now. We're in chapter 22. And if you haven't been following, you don't know the story, you haven't been following along, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go and read for yourself. Listen to the sermons, but definitely read for yourself <clears throat> the events that led up to this. Because here... It's really important to know just how much Abraham had gone through to get Isaac. All the different things that, that had gone on for Abraham to have his son Isaac. And it's really important to understand that as we go into chapter 22 here. Because verse 1 in chapter 22 starts like this. <clears throat> Verse 1 says, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Verse 2, take your son, he said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of, of, of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. <clears throat> God's telling Abraham. Yeah, you know that son that, that we went through and, and all the different things that you went through to get Isaac? I want you to sacrifice him. Now, we know with the New Testament that there's a, there's a similarity here between sacrificing your only son and what God was asking Abraham to do and how that, that symbolism comes into play with God sacrificing his only son. Abraham didn't know any of that, obviously, because it hadn't happened yet. Now, you may be thinking, why in the world would God tell Abraham to kill his son? That's asking Abraham to do something evil. That's, that's, that's tempting Abraham to perform a, a great sin. No, it's not exactly what it was, and we'll, we'll see what happens there. But if we look at the word here. In verse 1, after these things, God tested Abraham. See, God tests us. He doesn't tempt us to do evil things. He doesn't tempt us. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to do evil things. He doesn't tempt us to do evil things, but he tests us to see where our faith is, where, where, where our trust is. And we see this even as Abraham is going along with this test. We see that there's, there's a faith and there's a trust that God is not tempting Abraham to do something that God doesn't know is good. Abraham has to trust God over and over and over throughout this. And we see this as Abraham goes through it. But this has to be a great moment of, of absolute trust in God. God tells him, you know, you waited 100 years to have this son. You, you, you had all these other things that happened in between. 
with, you know, with Hagar and Ishmael and, and the whole situation there. And then you had to send Ishmael and Hagar away. And, you, you know, you, you have your son Isaac after all these years and all this this time building up to this. Now I want you to go go to a mountain I'm going to tell you about and sacrifice your son. So what does Abraham do? Well, if he were Jonah, he would have ran the other direction. Jonah didn't even want to go where God told him to go and preach. Abraham, so look at what he does in verse 3. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took with him two of his young men and his son Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and sat out to the, to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. There's a lot going on in that couple of verses there. <clears throat> Again, Jonah would have absolutely ran the other way. And most of us, if God told us to sacrifice one of our kids, would go, huh, do what? No. But Abraham gets up early in the morning. Gets up early. Gets up early. Some think that that means before the sun even came up. Because he's up early before most people would get up. And most people got up when the sun came up. So Abraham is up early to prepare for this. He starts splitting wood. He starts chopping wood and splitting wood for the burnt offering. Abraham is following what God said to do and getting up early in order to do so. And then he travels for three days. It wasn't just go, go outside and do it there. He has to think about this for three days as he's carrying all this. He's thinking for three days as he's going with his son and two other servants. He's thinking I, for three days, I've got, I'm going to have to sacrifice my son when we get there. I'm going to have to kill my son when we get there. For three days. Then he gets there and he sees the place in the distance. He sees that mountain that God had told him about. And he looks at his two servants and says, me and my son are going to go worship God. You stay here and then we'll come back. He doesn't say, I'll come back. He tells the two servants, we will come back. Me and Isaac will come back. He says, we'll, plural. There's two servants there. Only him and Isaac are going up. And he says, we'll come back. We're going to go worship, and then we'll come back. He, he specifically says, the boy and I will go over there to worship, and then we will come back. Verse 6 says, Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. What it means by that is he put it on Isaac's back. He made Isaac carry the wood. Isaac is having to carry the wood. In his hand, he took the fire and the sacrificial knife, and the two of them walked on together. So the wood is on Isaac. And Abraham has the fire and the sacrificial knife, the two most dangerous parts of that, the fire and the knife. Also, Isaac is the one that's going to be offered as a burnt offering, and the, the wood is put on Isaac, whereas Abraham is the one that's going to have to perform the sacrifice, so he holds the fire and the knife. Now they're walking up the mountain, the two of them. Verse 7, then Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, my father. And he replied, here I am, my son. Isaac said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Isaac realizes, um, dad, you know, we've got, we've got the wood, we got the fire, we got the knife. Um, dad, where's the lamb? Dad, where's the lamb? 
Isaac would not believe, couldn't believe that his father would have forgotten the most important part of a burnt offering, and that's the lamb. So Isaac's looking around going, uh, Dad, you okay? Um, what's going on here? But look at how, how Abraham answers. In verse 8, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. Abraham answers, answers Isaac and says, God's going to provide the lamb. <clears throat> Abraham knew that regardless of what happened, that God had already made a promise that through Isaac would be the line. So somehow, some way, God was going to work something here. Because if anything, Abraham knew and had to know at this point that when God promised something, it was going to happen. And God had promised Abraham that through Isaac, his line would be going. So Abraham knows that there's something that's going, there's something here. Something is going to happen. Something is here. Whether, whether it's God, I sacrifice him as a burnt offering and God brings him back, revives him. Or there's something that's going to happen here. Abraham knows that God does not break promises. Abraham laughed. Sarah did too. But Abraham laughed when God promised that they would have a kid at 100 years old. At Abraham at 100. Abraham laughed. And God provided that promise. There was numerous other things. Again, if you haven't been following along, follow the story of Abraham and look at how many times that God promised something and Abraham wasn't sure about it at first. And then it came through and the promise was fulfilled. So at this point, Abraham knows that when God promises something, it's going to happen. So he knows. He had told his two servants, me and the boy are going to go worship, then we'll come back. When Isaac asked, where's the lamb? He, uh, Abraham says, God's going to provide whatever he wants. I'm following what God says, and God's going to provide that lamb somehow, some way. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but God's going to provide something. And God... And he's thinking to himself, God, God promised me you, son, and he promised that through my line, through through you, my line would continue, and through you, I would be the father of many nations. He already promised that. So I don't know exactly what's happening, but I've got to have faith and trust in God that he's going to provide and do something miraculous here. Don't know what. But I gotta take that next step. I gotta continue walking up this mountain. I don't know what's going to happen when I get there, but I got to continue walking along this mountaintop. I don't know where this next step's going to lead, but God told me to take this next step, so I'm going to take this next step. Is that blind faith? No, it's not blind faith, because the thing is, is, is again, Abraham had seen the promises of God before. So it's not blind. It's not blind faith. It's not blind trust. He had already seen what God could do and what God had done and all the promises that God had fulfilled before. So it's not a blind trust. It's not a blindly following something that you don't know anything about. That would be blind trust. That would be blind faith is following something that you have no idea about. It's not blind. Abraham wasn't blind. He knew exactly. He didn't know what God was going to do, but he knew God was going to do something. There's also consideration to take here. Remember that Abraham was in pagan lands. And it was common for the pagans of this land to perform child sacrifice through burning the children. They had to pass through the fire, as they said. So God was also wanting to. I think, anyway, it's it, 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 the way I look at it a lot. God would want Abraham to prove that he was loyal to God, as just as loyal to God as the pagans were to their false gods. But God was going to intervene in this. 
Abraham was in a pagan land where where child sacrifice and burning your burning your children to appease the false gods was a normal thing. So Abraham had to kind of be going, you know, in his mind, there was a certain point where he had to think, that's just what the pagans do. But this is God telling me to do it. And God's not going to have me perform something paganistic. So there's going to be something that happens along the way. I don't know what. All I got to do is continue doing what God tells me to do. And he's going to do something. Now imagine, if you will, if Abraham had not followed exactly what God told him to do. Would it have played out the same way? Absolutely not. Was there would there have been a potential for a large disaster if, if Abraham wouldn't have followed exactly what God said to do when God said to do it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So as we continue here, verse nine. When they arrived at the place that God had told them about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. <clears throat> Isaac's got to realize at this point, um, Dad, what you doing here, buddy? <laughs> Dad, what you doing? Dad, this isn't funny anymore. So he's bound up in the woods around him. He's on this altar. He's tied up with the wood around him. He's ready to go down. Verse 10, then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. He's got the knife in his hand. He's coming up with the dagger. Verse 11, but then an angel of the Lord called from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He replied, here I am. Then he, God, the angel, the angel of the Lord, and usually when we see the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, with it spelled out like that, the way that it, it, it's spelled out, normally that indicates that that would be Jesus. In most instances, maybe not here, it doesn't specify, but usually that's 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 what we got. Then he said, do not lay a hand on the boy or, in, or do anything to harm him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son from me. Abraham's coming, got the knife in his hand. Isaac's bound up, the wood's around him. Abraham's got the sacrificial knife in his hand. He starts coming with it. <laughs> And Abraham, Abraham, oh, here I am. <laughs> Thank you. Just in time. And the angel says, don't lay a hand on him. Because I know now that you are completely and totally devoted to God and you wouldn't withhold anything from me. You have to love God. You, and that's the whole, the, 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 the Ten Commandments can be summed up as love God and love, love each other. Love God. And when God told Abraham to do this, he didn't withhold anything from God. He wouldn't even withhold the thing that he would love and cherish the most in the world. He wouldn't hold that back from God. That if God asked that, it would be given. And Abraham knew that whatever the outcome was, whatever the outcome was, Abraham knew that God was there. And even if, even if, and here's the big, the big one, even if Isaac would have died in that moment, Abraham knew Abraham knew that God would take care of his son. One way or the other, no matter the outcome, Abraham knew that God would take care of his son. So he wasn't holding his son back from God. 
But they stop him. It says, I know now that you fear God and you, you wouldn't withhold your, your own son from me. Verse 13. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. You know, they had just walked up there. And I'm sure, I'm sure as they're walking, Abraham knew and had told Isaac that God would provide the ram, provide the lamb. I'm sure that, that that ram wouldn't have necessarily even been there before because I guarantee you Abraham was looking around going, okay, where is God going to provide this from? God, I'm sure Abraham was looking around to try to see what was around up there. I can almost promise you that that ram had not been there before. So Abraham sees this ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. So today it is said, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. The Lord will provide That mountain is, it, it was named, the Lord will provide did it look how Abraham thought it would look? No, not at all. Was it was it taking steps towards something, not having a clue how it was going to play out, but knowing that since God was leading you and telling 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 Abraham to take that next step, to go up that mountain, to to prepare for these things. Did Abraham know how it was going to be provided? No. But he knew that there would be some kind of provision because he was doing what God told him to do. He didn't have a clue how that was going to turn out, but he knew that God was faithful. He trusted in God's promises. He trusted in God's faithfulness. And God provided. Verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, this is the Lord's declaration, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your only son, I will indeed bless you and make your off offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky. And the sand on the seashore, your offspring will possess the gates of their enemies and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my command. Abraham went back to his young men and they got up together and went to Beersheba and Abraham settled in Beersheba. Because you have done this and not withheld your only son, you will be blessed. And again, we can tell kind of by this, the way this is, is speaking here, by myself, and you have not withheld, you have obeyed my command, you have not withheld your, your only son from me, those kind of statements that are made from the angel of the Lord, that leads to believe that that is Jesus that is speaking there, that would have been the sacrifice. And the only son that was sacrificed. And he is speaking to Abraham on this notion here. It's, it's, it's very deep. It's very profound. There's a lot of, of things that you can go into and, and think about on that note and on that notion. And I'm going to allow each person to kind of think about that in their own life. And how that applies to what are you withholding? What are you not listening to God telling you to take that next step on? So, as we continue and close out verse 22, we get to verse 20. <clears throat> now, after these things, Abraham was told, Milcah has also borne sons to your brother Nahor. 
Uz, his firstborn, his brother Buzz, Kamul, the father of Aram, Shesed, Hazo, uh, Pildash, Jil Jilfa, and Bethel. And Bethuel fathered Rebekah. Milcah bore these eight to Nahor, Abram's, Abraham's brother. His concubine, whose name was Ramah, also bore Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Makkah. Why is that important? There's a lot of names. Why is that important? Why, why do we need to know any of that? It sets up to Rebecca's family. It sets up who Rebecca was, and Rebecca will become important as we continue through the book of Genesis. It sets up who Rebecca's family and where she came from and where her family line is. And it's still connected into Abraham and Abraham's offspring. So why is it placed here? It seems a little out of place if you're just reading through from chapter 22 to 23 and, and, and going, why would it be placed there? Because the promise had just been made to Abraham that through his line, and then it's setting up who Rebecca's family is. So again, there's an importance of who Abraham's line, how it continued down. So while if you're not looking, it may seem like that those list of names are kind of out of place and in a weird place. Knowing the story, we see that it was just promised to Abraham again that his offspring, he just, his son was, was just, you know, saved from a sacrifice, basically. And again, promised that through Isaac, Abraham's line would, would be, he would be the father of many nations. There'd be many, many nations and, and so many offspring and so on and so forth. And then we immediately getting it, get into a list of names that set up who Rebecca was. It becomes an important lineage of names as we continue forward and when we get into who who is rebecca and and when we get to that further on in genesis we can come back here to chapter 22 the end of chapter 22 and look at the lineage to see where they are so with that i'm going to go ahead and close this one out if you'll bow your heads with me please Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we want to thank you for this day. We thank you for this message. We thank you for the words. We thank you for the encouragement. We thank you for the strengthening. And Lord, we just ask that you're with us throughout the rest of this day, that we can that we can be strengthened by your word. And we ask that you're with us throughout the rest of our day as we continue to try to do your will. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. With that, I love you guys, and I will see you Wednesday night Bible study, Wednesday at 7, Friday night lights, Friday at 8, Sunday morning service, Sunday mornings at 11. Until then, love you guys. See you later.